Hello, beloved sisters. Welcome back to Permission Granted, the place where you get to ditch all of society's rules, live your full self, and win. And today, you are in for a treat, my sister, as we are here with Love Tashia Asanti. Yes, indeed, I did say love. Uh, who is an internationally celebrated spiritual teacher, an award-winning poet, a journalist, and author of seven books. Love starred in the groundbreaking reality TV show celebrating America's rich diversity. Her first novel, The Seer, has been adapted for the screen. Tashio's poetry has been published in distinguished magazines such as Essence, along with a wide assortment of books and anthologies. You're going to get to read her full bio here. We'll just get into uh, you getting to know this magnificent woman. Welcome, sister. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. So we were just talking before I hit record, and it was so good. And I was like, hang on. I want, I want to get this on the recording for our sisters. And we're going to just connect for a bit, and then we'll go into an experience that you're going to take us into. But I want to ask you, because I was asking you about love, and that's your first name. And yeah, so, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about it, but I have, I have a follow-up question to it. All right. Well, of course, I, I, as we go through the phases of naming ourselves, of defining ourselves, of awakening who we are as people and really discovering what makes us tick, what makes us happy, what brings us joy and bliss, we also want to use the energy of names. And when people in my tradition speak a name to you. A name is more than a name. A name is just not something random. It's something sacred. It's something divine. And so in one of my rebirthing processes, and there have been many, I knew that I wanted to create an energy around me, a vibration around me that not only uplifted me, but uplifted everybody I came in contact with. So what better energy than love, right? Yes, to do that. So I want it when people greet me, they have to greet me in love. When they talk to me, they're conversing with me in the energy of love. And when they leave me, what I want them to remember about me is love. Because what greater energy is there, right? Yes. Indeed. Yes, yes. So tell me about what was it like giving yourself permission to name yourself love? Like, <laughs> was, there, was there a process around claiming that? Absolutely. I had yeah. to you know, be willing to release something because whenever you're gonna become something new, you have to release something about yourself or in your life that is no longer serving you. So I released the energy of fear. I released the energy of intolerance. I released the energy of misperception because you can't not understand love. I don't care who you are, where you come from, what place you're moving in in your life. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants to be loved. So I had to release all everything that was opposite of love in my life and in me. And so I continue to do that. And every time somebody speaks that name to me, they're literally speaking to my consciousness. They're speaking to what we call in my tradition, my ori, O-R-I. And so they're speaking love. When they say love, my ori hears that, right? My spiritual body hears that. My embodiment, my sacral, sacred embodiment hears and vibrates on the energy of love. So that was the process. And, and the more I do it, the more people that greet me in love, the more that I am filled with. And then I get to exude back to you and to other people, the energy of love. Yes. Yes. So all the people in your life that you've had for many, many years and many, many decades, are they, are they down? Are they calling you love? They are. I remember, well, my mother, God rest her soul, she said she was going to continue to call me the name that she gave me when I was born, which I love, <laughs> by the way, because she gave it to me in love. But other than her, you know, most of the people around me and in my life, they really respect however you define yourself. And if you define yourself as love, if you feel like you are moving in that energy, they're going to call you the name that you asked them to, out of respect. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> um, as I'm just sitting here with you, I'm experiencing your power and your eloquence and your ability to stand in your truth, just your truth. So what, is that, what, is, what has that journey been to come to be able to do that? Because I think we all want that, but not everybody can do that or knows how to do that or has yes. had role models yes. for that. Yes. 
Yes. Well, as you know, I've written a couple books along the path. And I think every book that I write, there is an awakening for me that I then allow spirit, God, the holy divine, you know, energies in the world to channel through me what I should do with an experience that I've had that has helped me to grow. And so one of the last books that I wrote is called The Master Breakthrough. And of course, you know, when you create, because you're a creator as well, when you channel these medicines out of you, it's usually from pain, it's from disappointment, it's from hurt that you survived, it's from things that you've encountered in the world that weren't fun. So I had gone through some of those things and, and I got to a place in my life where I found myself like stuck and I couldn't break through, at least I thought I couldn't. There were big obstacles in front of me and I didn't know what I was gonna do and how to get to the next place. And so I called on spirit, like I learned to do. Some people call him God, some people call him Allah, Jesus, the Christ, whatever it is, Olutamari, whatever it is that people who are listening call that positive energy in your life. I called on that energy for me. And what came through was that I needed to break through and I needed to figure out what I had done and basically my part, and I wanna get ahead of myself, but what my part was in me getting stuck. So that was like the first step in, in breaking through, was just wow. to look at what I had done to put myself in a place where I had gotten stuck. And that was, it was hard, it was painful. I'm hearing but personal I'm so responsibility grateful. as yes. the first step, yes. That, that yeah. personal accountability was a, was a big thing. Yeah. And yeah. And then what? So I had to identify that first thing that, that kind of like take that first step to turn the mirror. One of the things that I asked everybody to bring to this session was a mirror, but to turn that mirror around to me and to be willing to, to look, you know, in that mirror at myself and to look in my own eyes and to ask myself, right, some tough questions about me mm -hmm. and to be able to really almost go in with a, a spiritual laser yeah. into my own life, into my own body, into my own mind and heart, and to go, okay, what turns did you take? Was it a left? Was it a right? Did you go backwards? You know, what got you into this place of stuckness, of not being able to break through? And I identified some core things. And, and again, one of the things that I said uh, I wanted folk to do was to choose one of the five key areas in your life that you want to break through in, whether it be love, whether it be relationships, finance, career, whatever area it is where you are feeling stuck or either not able to, maybe you've hit, you know, that ceiling. Maybe you've had a lot of growth, you've had a lot of success, but right now you feel like, what is the next level for you and how do I get there? So I asked people to identify one of those five key areas, which is what I did. I identified that key area. And then the next step was I created a roadmap. I started to look at making a blueprint for myself based on realistic goals. And, and, and that sometimes I don't even like to say that because it implies that there's a limit on your success. There's a limit on the good that you can have, which there isn't. The only limit that you have is the one that you place on yourself, right? Indeed. And so I had to identify, so number one, what was the key area where I was stuck? Was it love? Was it finance? Was it health? What was that key area? Then what I myself had done, that was step two, the actions that I had, taked, had taken, the thought process that I had adopted, my core beliefs, right? What I had done, my part in getting me in that stuck place. And then number three, the fun part. Now I get to create a roadmap to break through. Now I get to look at what are the things that I need to put in place. So not only am I breaking through now, but to prevent me from getting back in that stuck place. Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. All right. Yes. I mean, I think that with this, like, you know, the world being in the state that it's in with this massive amount of quarantine, I think it's such a, first of all, what a tremendous opportunity to look at all our shit. Yes. Um, so I know everything is up. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to have a problem coming up with an area. So sister, yes. choose your area. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right here with you. I've got my mirror right here. I got yes. 
you know, that was just telling me, you just need a small mirror. And I was like, oh, this is what I was going to tell you. This is what really landed for me when you were saying, like, looking in the mirror and asking yourself. What I love about that is that it's very much a practice in sovereignty and you're not looking outside of yourself for the answers. Yes. And I really felt, I just, I was like, yeah, like, so powerful to actually just sit there and look into the wise, all-knowing eyes of the person who knows you best. Oh, yes. Oh, right? you better speak that. Yes. So asking those questions. So I really love this because I was actually just, yeah, I was just talking to a client yesterday and she, what she was doing. And I was like, well, don't be so quick to give your power away. Like, what are you doing? Like looking everywhere for all the answers. Yes, so I really love part. this practice and I'm ready to dive in. So tell us what to do. <laughs> okay. So you had three things that you were supposed to bring. One was a glass of water. Water is a very sacred, I mean, yes. where this works. Yes. It's a very sacred medicine. And it can be used in a lot of different ways, which that's another workshop. I won't get into that today. And then you can bring a mirror of any size. And if you don't have a mirror, if you're watching this session and you're someplace like on the airplane or somewhere where you don't have access to a mirror, use your hand. Because the hand is a reflection of your soul, of your being. So you can always use your hand to reflect to you what you want to vibrate into your spirit, okay? But you can use a cosmetic mirror. You can use a mirror on your little uh, makeup kit. You can use any kind of mirror. And then, of course, you need writing utensils. If you have a journal, something that you can write in, you want to use that as part of the session because there's something powerful. Yes, that's beautiful. There's something powerful about being able to see your intentions and your goals in front of you in black and white when you can access them and you can tap into what you see those words that you yourself have channeled onto the page and you can revert to that and go back to that again and again and remind yourself what intention you've set for you what you want to manifest today and that's that's what those tools are going to be used for so the first thing we're going to do is look and you said it, Anahita. Am I saying your name correctly? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So you said it. We're going to reflect in that mirror back to ourselves. Yes. What it is we want to accomplish. And so often we are rushing when we are putting on our clothes and we're putting on our makeup. So when we look in the mirror, we don't really take the time to look at ourselves, to look in our eyes and to ask self, you know, what it wants, what it needs, what it's feeling. What vibration is coming from you to ask ourselves for our own truth? And that's why we look in that mirror. That's why we stop and literally gaze with love and forgiveness and understanding at ourselves. So look in that mirror just for a moment. Look in your own eyes and just give love to yourself. And if you're really feeling bold, put your mirror down for a second and turn to the right and just kiss yourself. Just give yourself a little pay. Yes, yes. <laughs> just kiss yourself. Yeah. Or, and, and if you want, you can even stop and just hug yourself. Sometimes we just need to pause and embrace ourselves because we hug our children. We love on our mates. We give so much away. And so in this session, in this breakthrough session, I encourage folks to just, not only after you do your mirror exercise of looking in your own eyes, but to wrap your eyes, your arms around yourself and to ask yourself while you're looking in that mirror, and let's go back now, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? What condition do you want for your life? And when you look in those eyes, really lavish and take a moment to just feel yourself and feel your own vibration to love on yourself, to extend compassion to yourself, to extend forgiveness to yourself, to extend joy and bliss and the energy of bliss and joy. And to tell yourself as you look in that mirror to say, I enjoy you. To look in that mirror and say, you deserve the very best. To look in that mirror and say, this is your day to look in that mirror and say, this is your life. And I give you today, and add your own name, 
So I'll say it for myself. I give you love, permission to create the life for you that you want and that you deserve. And so wherever you are, I want you to look in that mirror, look in your own eyes, and just speak that affirmation to yourself that I give you, say your name, I give you permission, permission to create the life, the love, and the joy that you desire, that you want, and that you need. And you want to do that, family, wherever you are and whoever you are and wherever you're watching this, you want to do that for a seven-day cycle. So just every morning, it only takes five seconds because I know you're busy. I know you have a lot to do. I know you have to make some oatmeal for the kids. I know you need to get on the freeway. And there's so much that you have to do, even though you may be quarantining as you're watching this, or you may be going to work. You may be working remotely like many of us are. are. Take that five seconds and speak to yourself. Yes, what you want to manifest. You deserve it. You are worthy. I'm going to speak that to your ori, to your spiritual consciousness right now. Speaking love, speaking goodness, joy, happiness. Okay? And that mirror exercise can also be done in the evening before you go to sleep. Now, I also told you to have a glass of water nearby, and I want to tell you why. Because as you are speaking. There is power, first of all, in your words. Mm -hmm. So we have to develop a consciousness about what we say and what we speak. And even, I don't, you know, I'm not saying everybody reads the, the word, the biblical word, maybe other spiritual words that you read, but there's a biblical saying that says, in the beginning there was the word. And so those words are teaching us something. Those words are medicine. So, so we want to be careful what we're speaking over the seven days that we're doing this work. And that glass of water, the reason why I ask you to speak love, speak bliss, to speak light, speak happiness, to speak peace, to speak good health, speak financial wealth, abundance. You see what I'm doing right now? I'm speaking yeah. all of that into this into water. water. Yes. And I see you, Anahita. I see you. You're doing it too. But you're already moving in that vibration. I see you. So... Now you want to take a sip and ingest all of that love and that energy that you just put into the universe now into your physical body. Mm. Mm. And just know that it is vibrating. The crystals in that water, the energy, the vibrational patterns that you just spoke in the room, wherever you are, whether you're in the bathroom, you can do this in the bathroom. You can do this while you're sitting on the commode. <laughs> wherever you are, you can do it in your car. You can you know, set one of those mirrors on your dashboard and speak it and have your bottle of water sitting in the cup holder. And I want you to be safe if you're driving doing this. You do it on the airplane, okay? Drink that water so that you've now put that vibrational energy into your body and it's starting to activate because the body vibrates on what you put in it. We hear it all the time. We say we are what we eat. We are what we drink. A lot of people have adopted drinking alkaline water because of its vibrational properties. So what? So drinking the water that we've spoken, all of that positivity around, we've now put that into us. And before this session is over, I want you to finish all that water. So your body just starts to take it in. You're gonna feel it. Yes. When you finish this session with Anahita and I, you are going to be moving in a new vibration. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah. A vibration of worthiness, of everything you ever wanted for yourself. And that's this series that my sister has created is all about. It's about activating and manifesting and becoming and being and moving in that and knowing that we are already Whatever it is we spoke, we are already that, right? And the universe is just waiting for us to show up and be that, that we already are. Ooh. <laughs> truth. Yes. Yes. Mm. Speaking truth. I feel it. Yes. So how do we create the area? So the area, is that it? Is it just giving ourselves permission or is there, is there asking of the questions? No. Very good. Thank you for asking me that. So. 
I talked earlier at the beginning, you're gonna have to go back and watch this if you're just tuning in. You're gonna have to, we have to go back now to the blueprint, to the roadmap, right? And there's a very popular saying, it says, if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. That's right. So we not only have to be clear about the direction that we want to go in, we have to have a plan to get there. And we have to base that plan off the resources that we have access to. Now, what's incredible, Anahita, about creating this plan and in our breakthrough process is that sometimes we will find out that we have access to resources that we weren't aware of. Sometimes just by creating the plan, we start to draw to us energetically because the universe sees what we put down on the paper. The universe hears what we speak that we want to activate and people will start to come and all of a sudden you may say you know my teacher uh, got in touch with me or an old business constituent got in touch with me that i thought i would never see again and out of the blue they just called me because the universe it, it's the universal law that it's going to back up what you expect it's going to back up what you believe it's going to back up what yeah. you set intentions for she's like okay you talking to me Come on, people. I mean, that is the power of commitment. That's what I love. What you're talking about to me, it's like when I see people not committing to their dreams, not betting on themselves, I'm like, but the universe is waiting for you. Like you're waiting for the universe. The universe is waiting for you. So like, that's not how it works. Yes. You got to go first. The universe yes. is going to back you up. So I just love yes. what you're saying here. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. So that roadmap, that blueprint that we're going to create, again, we have to base it first on the resources that we have available. So I work with people all the time and they tell me, I say, what is your goal? For example, they say, oh, I wanna sell a million books. I wanna write a book and when I sell a million books, I say, well, do you know what people, are you aware of what people who sold a million books, what did they put in place, right? To sell those million books and they go, well, no. Okay, yeah, aha. <laughs> Research. We have to, yes, we have to start there. Cause we have to, you know, you have, there's things that you have to put in place that you know, mimic and are part of the recipe for that selling a million books, right? So create the plan based on the resources. If you know that you have a $500 budget for your publicity. So when you're you, speaking, I want, I want to really get into the, the yes. experience of it. So as we're sitting here, really like yes. whatever one area of life that we're choosing to transform, right? Yes. Let's, let's just say, let's just take the example because when you're speaking to resources, I'm thinking like, are you speaking just money? Are you thinking time? Are you thinking relationships? And like really going through the full process. But can we take people through the process while they're here? Yes, can we do it? Can absolutely. We do it? Can we absolutely. Do it? So you can, okay. I, after you identify the key area. So I guess just, that. so should yes, I was say, let's pick that? one. Yeah, yes. yeah. Go. Okay, good. How about let's pick relationships. Okay. Let's say love relationships. Okay. That's a very popular one. You're, you're nodding like, oh, yes. Yeah, it's always good. You can always yes. improve. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so you want to have a healthy love relationship, a vibrant, sexy relationship with someone who you can share life, where there is reciprocity, where y'all set the, the, the boundaries, how you want it to be. You, your relationship could be any way that you want it to be. So let's say that you've set that as the key area that you want to work on. Okay. okay. So the first thing you want to do, again, identify your goals, your short and your long-term goals that relate to a love relationship. Okay. So your short-term goal may be that you just want to find some great people to go out on dates with. There's lots of resources that you can use to support that. There's apps. You can talk to people you know. You can go to social events. You can use social media. I mean, there are so many places. So are that we you making a list? Are we making yes. a list? What are we doing? Yes, we're going to make a list okay. of the, the tools that we're going to use to basically activate that key area and to create our roadmap. All right. So we've already done three things. We've already identified A, the key area. We've already looked at some of the resources that we have available in our lives. We want to start to think about that. What can I tap into? So if you're watching this session, you should be writing down right now, what are the resources that I have to manifest and attract people that I enjoy spending time with? 
that are possible romantic, you know, interests. Okay. So you want to look at those resources. Now, here's the big one. Now we're going to get into the meat. And I don't know how much time we have. So you tell me, cause I can go deep. We're good. We got like, we have as much time. Okay. Great. We got like 10 more minutes. All right. Great. So we're at the core place, right? It's a perfect time. We want to identify what I call success blockers. Okay. In this key area of love relationships, because they say that you can't, you know, put a Cadillac in a Volkswagen garage, right? You can't, you know, you're calling on the universe to give you a Cadillac, but you only, your garage is only big enough <laughs> for a Volkswagen. Right. Or if the space in your life is so cluttered that there isn't room for that divine love relationship, or there's something in you that needs to be cleaned up. Come on now. That needs to get ready. You got to get ready for your blessing. You got to be ready to receive it. You see? So if there's something, if that blocker is in you, if you're still carrying baggage from the last relationship, if you're angry, if you have some things that you need to work on in your life so that you can have space and time to tap into that love relationship or to really date and have fun, right? So as you've got it, step three is to identify the blocks to you manifesting your key area, which is a love relationship. That's what you want. That's the goal that you set. What are the success blockers? Are they internal? Are they external? Are they core belief systems? Do you have unhealed trauma? Is there behavior patterns or other stressors that always interfere or get in the way when you're trying to manifest a love relationship? Fear is a big one, right? A lot of people I work with, they like, I meet them. We go out on three dates, but I never get past the three dates. And I go, what happens on that third date? They say, oh, my trust issues come up. Oh, love. <laughs> you know, I go out on that third date and I start finding flaws and things wrong in that person. And I go, well, are they real things? You know, did they, are they not a good fit for your blueprint? And they go, no, it wasn't that they weren't a good fit. It was just, I was scared. Ah. Aha, <laughs> there it is. So again, in identifying the blockers, we have to identify the real and potential things that could interfere with us having what we say we want, okay? And we have to understand and, and get in touch with, are they inside of us or are they outside of us? Maybe your job has you working 60 hours a week and you don't have time to date, or maybe, it's because you put these things in your way. You don't have to work like that, you choose to. So maybe you can shift that. So again, identify the success blockers. So we have to A, identify what we want in the key area. B, create a blueprint for what it is we want to achieve, what we want to manifest. And C, we have to identify the things that are blocking us, the things that are interfering with us, having what we say we want. A lot of times we say we want love, we say we want a relationship, we get in and we go, oh, I don't want to commit. You talked about commitment earlier. You know, some of us have commitment phobia. And maybe we're not supposed to be in a committed relationship. That's okay, too. We just have to get clear on that so that when we meet that potential, right, we can say, now, look, I really like you, but I want an open relationship. And I understand and respect if you're not into that, right? You're cracking up over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like just, it. just like knowing yourself and being real yes. about what it is that you want, right? Yes. yes, and giving yourself permission to be that, right? Yeah. Because somebody out there is looking for exactly what you want. The universe, you guys are out there looking for it, and you're just waiting to connect in real time. But if you're not clear, huh? If you're not clear on what it is you want, you can't attract it to you. You cannot manifest it right? And your house has to be in order. Your house has to be in order. Say more. So, okay. So, so going into the, through this process again, I want to keep bringing us back to the process. Yes. Because I know we have uh, like five minutes left so that we move our sisters who are watching us through the whole thing from A to B so yes. that they're not left to do it after this. So that we're yes. really in it together now. So yes. I've identified the success blockers. Now what? Now, the fourth step 
is your tools. Okay. You can't cut wood with a dull ax, right? You got to make sure that your ax is sharp and that you have the tools, i.e. the resources, the networks, the skills to fulfill the plan that you've made. So what are the things that you need to have in place? So if you want to have a love relationship is your goal that you've set. If you're watching this right now and you've said it's love. It's love that I want or it's finances, whatever it is that you've chosen. Let's go with love, okay? What resources do you need to have in place, all right? Whether you're male or female, right? There's a funny saying that one of my teachers once said. He said, no money, no honey. <laughs> so you have to have resources if you want to go dating I mean and, and even if you you know you have to have your hair coiffed you have to have a beautiful garment to wear you want to be looking well smelling good right you have to be like that flower that attracts the bumblebee right mm -hmm. the beautiful flower that attracts the bumblebee yeah. so that's part of your resources your networks is next that's also part of your success tools so you want to have the right networks. So if you want to attract an upscale executive, but you're hanging out with people that basically, you know, are not in that sector, you're not going to, you're not going to fulfill that goal because you have not placed yourself in position to receive what it is you say that you want. So we can't just speak it. Our actions have to echo and reflect what we said we want for ourselves. We have to surround ourselves and you're not again, with the kind of people that will vibrate back to us what we say we want, okay? So, so again, now there's your networks and then the skills. So to date, what do we need? We need good communication skills, right? We need to be fun, we need to be light, or we need to be around somebody who's just like us. Sometimes some people are not big talkers. And if you're not a big talker and you don't need a lot of conversation, then find someone who's just like that. Maybe you have a quirky sense of humor, and there's, but there's someone out there who has a quirky sense of humor too, and they will get you, but you have to put yourself in position to meet that person. So look for what the interests are that you have in a love, in a love relationship. Are you a golfer? Do you love the beach? Do you love to hike? Do you love mountains? Are you an investment broker? Do you want to be around people who are into that? You know, do you, are you an art buff? Are you a wine connoisseur? What is it that you love? Your, again, your networks, right? And, and create that by using your skills, create that and put that around you so that you can connect with people who are of like mind and spirit, all right? So that's step four. And then there's one more after that. Do we have like two minutes? We got two minutes, sister. Give it to you. All right. The last thing is what I call living in it. I call it success living. Right. We have to be in it, right? And we have to enjoy it. We have to vibrate in it. I'm talking about this is the place in this process where we start to see and live in and experience the benefits of our success plan, what we set for ourselves. So be in it, be it now, be happy. You're in that place. You've got three potential great dates that you're going out with. You've met some wonderful people and you can now pick and choose or not. <laughs> Maybe you're gonna keep dating all three of them. So what, it's your life, right? You choose what you want for yourself, but you created it. And now it's time to live in it and be in it. And it starts with what you see in here for you. It starts with what you visualize. One of the things that I do in my teachings is I take people through a meditation process where I literally have them visually see, they close their eyes and they meditate and they see themselves in the life that they're dreaming of. And I literally make them walk through everything, their house, their car. I have them see the receipt on their bank account. I have them see their physical body and optimal health, whatever it is, visualize it, see it, be it, right? Because we have to live it. And if you can see it, you can become it. Yes? Yes. Right? If you can see it, you can become it. That is the first step. They say, if you're going to fall down, make sure you fall down looking up. Because if you can look up, you can get up. One of my favorite motivational speakers, Les Brown, always says that. And I remembered that. You can see it. You can be it. And you can become it. I say. 100%. <laughs> I say. Thank you. Woo. All right. All right. So I really hope 
that especially, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Not all of us are looking for a relationship, but if you're looking for a relationship, I hope you went through that whole thing and that you're going to keep like working it. Um, I was actually, I kind of got stopped a little bit. I have to like work it out a little bit because I, I, I have a very good partnership. And so I was like, you know what I would love though? Because I just wrote relationship. And then I was like, what would I like want? And I was like, more mm -hmm. dancing. I want to dance. Mm -hmm. I, have to, like, I want more dancing. So I was actually doing that process. And, and I remembered that I got us a gift certificate for some private dance lessons that for Christmas oh. that I haven't used yet. Oh, that's, that's I'm sexy. Gonna I'm going to hit up that lady and be like, hey, remember that gift certificate? Let's, let's I, and something. speaking of that, I have a gift for a lucky person who watches this session. Tell us. That I'm going to give away. It has a $500 value. And these, I'm going to be sharing with this lucky person information and resources on branding and content and marketing that I worked 20 years to learn as a journalist, as an author of seven books, as a television personality, all of the things that I did so that I can get to this place to know how to tell you to take your brand, your product, your book, or whatever it is you do to the next level. Amazing. Um, Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and I know that you have a beautiful, generous gift for our tribe here, our sisters. Can you tell us about yes. it? Yes, I'm so excited that one very lucky person is going to be gifted with a set of my books, The Master Breakthrough, which is my best-selling book, A 24-Hour Spiritual Revolution. And it includes in that book a CD that you can play in your car, that you can play on your laptop, um, or I can send you also the MP3 file if you don't have that capacity. So you can just you know, play it on your iPhone or wherever you are and you'll be able to listen to the audio book as well. Amazing. And in it, it gives you this specific process that Anahita and I went through with you today. So I'm gonna gift one lucky person. Um, the book is called The Master Breakthrough, A 24-Hour Spiritual Revolution. This is so incredible, thank you, love. And I know you have actually a super mystical magical powerful gift for this community so tell us what it is yes i am so excited and honored to gift your community members with a soul scroll all they have to do is just click on the link that's on the page for this event yes and they will be able to access a specifically and custom message just for them that was channeled by me by love to help them in fulfilling their goals and their dreams that they set as a result of this process. This is so amazing, you guys. So all you do is just click the link, go and enter yes. your name and email address, and you'll yes. be able to choose a frequency through the numbers that will give you your direct channel message from this yes. mystic year. Yes. Thank you so much, love. Yeah, there's over 100 <laughs> scrolls there, so they will be able to pick. Wow. Yes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I can't wait. OK. Yes. <laughs> Over a hundred scrolls. They just picked their number. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. This was so awesome. Thank goodness. Thank the universe for your light. And thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about what the future holds for all that the work that you are doing, that we are doing on the planet. And each single one of us. Indeed. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to have you. And to everyone tuning in, just keep taking yourself on. Engage. Get connected with love and her magic and her mystery and we'll keep seeing you in the sessions blessings everyone blessings